Welcome to episode 2 of Retro Programming on the Commodore 64. In this episode I'll cover some more programming patterns and let's have a look at how to use the built-in debugger. So let's get to it. We can get some more mileage out of the right string example from last episode. First let's have a look at the loop here where we copy our string to the screen. So currently it's hard-coded to take a string of length of 16 characters. So that is not very practical because when we change our strings, we will have to count all the characters every single time and modify the code here to, to write out our string. So a better way to do it is to add a string terminator. So if we go in here and we add a zero, to the end of our string. So this will be like our string and then there will be a byte value zero at the end. Then we can make a small modification here. So what this will do is that it will read our string and we will continue increasing the value of x. So we're reading string plus x and then once it reaches here byte zero so we do this branch if equal and if we don't have any comparison that means equal to zero then it will jump to done if it's not done then it will continue looping so this should give us the same result as what we had before let's try run it and there we go it prints the string out exactly as before so let's try change the string Okay, let's try again. And it still prints the string perfectly. So a zero terminated string is usually known as a C string. As in, that's how a string is defined in the C language. So the assembler here does have an easy way of defining zero terminated strings. If instead of writing text here, you can just write null and then we don't need the byte zero at the end that will create a zero terminated string but personally i like to be a little bit explicit with my code so i prefer text byte zero because then there's no confusion about it being a zero terminated string so this gives our little write string routine here a little bit of flexibility but it's still not very flexible what if we want to write more strings other strings what if we want to write strings to other places on the screen, not just on the top line here? So let's have a look at that. I'll just create a new file here. Just copy the existing content to a new file. Because while I think this is a very good development environment, one thing I do miss is some source code controls and version control. But we can live without it. Uh, just make copies of your code. So let's add a second string here. So let's modify our routine so we can write out any string at any location on the screen. So let me make a few code changes here. Okay, let's have a look at what this does. The first line here will load the lower byte of the address of my string 2. So my string 2 is actually an address in memory. As we have 64 kilobytes of memory, it's a 16-bit address. So all addresses will consist of two bytes, a low byte and a high byte. So what we're doing here is we're getting the low byte of my string 2 address and we're loading into the accumulator and then we are storing it 
down here in loop. So what it actually does, it modifies the code here in memory. So instead of my string, we're going to replace that with my string too while the program is running. So using this kind of self-modifying code is also a common programming pattern. And it's very different from when you work with compiled languages. Uh, you don't really modify the code in code. But since this is running in assembly, it's running in machine code. Everything here is just numbers in the memory. So we can modify it while it's running. So these four lines up here is going to replace my string with my string too. And up here, I take some new values and I replace the address 400 here with address 660. And again, we're using the same method of modifying the code directly in memory. So let's try run it. It should print out this is another string somewhere not at the top of the screen. Let's try run it. There we go. It printed this is another string and it did it down here. So let's try print both strings at the same time. Okay, so I just copied the code up here, modified it slightly to print out my string and a slightly different place on the screen. And each time we call our right string subroutine. So let's try run this and see if it works. Yeah, here we go. This is our two strings. This is a string. This is another string in two different areas of the screen. So using this method, we can print any string anywhere on the screen. However, this code doesn't look very elegant. So let's try another method. Again, I'll copy the code and put it in a new file. Just we have a history of these examples. So there's a link in the video description uh, where you can download the project here. So we have the full history of everything. So if you want to play with it, you don't have to re-enter everything. So a more elegant way of doing this is to change our right string into a macro. So we do it like this. So that's it. Now this become a macro. So let's try to see how we use it. So we can replace all this code here. And you can just write okay let's see how this works so yeah, instead of all the code we had before I just replaced it with a single line so now we're calling write string with two parameters the first parameter is the string we want to write out and the second parameter is the screen address we want to write it out to and down here you see def m define macro and in m in macro. This is what we need to do to define a macro. And then we can define parameters. So this would be the first parameter. This, this is our string. And this is our second parameter. This is our screen address. So let's try run it and see if it works. Yeah, works great. So this is a more elegant way of doing it. And we can try write out another string as well. Okay, now it should write out both strings. So let's see if that works. So that didn't run, you see down here. There are some errors, warnings. So let's see what happened. So it's a duplicate label loop in macro and duplicate label done. So why does this happen? Well, the way macros works is that it will actually duplicate this code. It will actually repeat all the code we have here twice. Each time we use the right string, it will put in this code and then it will take our parameters here and it will just replace these two with our actual parameters so that's why now we have duplicate labels here. 
so it will be confused there will be two loop labels so here it doesn't know which one is going to jump to the first or the second loop label so however there's an easy way to solve this if we use the add sign here in front of our labels and we need to do it here as well then we have now changed them to be local labels so local labels are only in scope under a global label so that means this loop can only be seen under this right string here so the assembler will take care of renaming these so we don't have any conflicts so let's try run it again and see if it works this time and there we go now it works perfectly so this is kind of an elegant way of doing it it gives much cleaner code however it does duplicate the code so you will have to decide whether something should be made into a macro because every time you use it it will duplicate the code and we only have so much memory to work with but in this case it's certainly the right thing to do and it keeps like very clean and easily maintainable code also if you find that you have some duplicate code it might be a good idea to consider making it into a macro just so it's easier to maintain okay let's move on and have a look at the debugger so I'll just prepare a small code sample here we can use for the debugger. So this is our original write string routine here without the auto run. So let's try to launch it in the debugger. Go up here, debug program. So this launches our code in the main debugger screen here. So we can see this is address $1,000. And this is our code we have here, our main, our string, our write string routine. So it's got all our code here. And then it's got a few other windows like watch list, a stack where we can view the stack and breakpoints. We can go in and add breakpoints. For example, let's say we want a breakpoint here on this return statement just right click toggle breakpoint now we have a breakpoint there one thing we need to understand about this debugger is that it's got some limitations it does not emulate a complete commodore 64 it only emulates the cpu and the memory that's it you don't have any video chip you don't have any sit chip you don't have any of the other functionality you don't have any of the rom so this is important if you're doing code like you want to set up an interrupt or something like that or maybe you're waiting for a vertical retrace or you're waiting for a joystick input or something like that it's not going to work in this debugger it's only for debugging very specific pieces of code but as long as you understand these limitations it's still very very useful when you're trying to find bugs in your code it does have one other window here you can actually emulate the screen memory oh well it's just gonna pretend it's the screen memory so we can move this around a little bit yeah so if we look at the main window here so we got our program counter so that is the address that's currently being executed you have your accumulator you have your x register y register uh, you have what is that uh, it must be a stack pointer and then we have all the cpu status flags over here and what we can do now is that we can actually step through our code and then we can see these values are going to change as we step through it and since we have a representation of the video memory uh, we should also be able to see our string being printed out over here so to step one instruction at a time you just hit f7 I'll try to do this now. You can see it jumped down to our right string here, and you can see it added the return address on the stack here. So now I should load zero into the X register. It's already zero, but let's go. And then it's gonna start loading our string into the accumulator. You can see it load into accumulator here. And then we have our check branch if it's zero, but we can see the 
zero flag is not set over here, so it's not going to branch down to done. And then it's going to store it in the first byte in our screen memory. And then we see it has a T here now. Increase X. And you can see it loops back again here. We load the next character, save the next character, and well, we can continue stepping through here. This can be very, very helpful once you get into more complex code. Even with its limitations, I will say it's a, it's a very nice tool to have. Another nice feature is that it will actually calculate the number of CPU cycles used. Sometimes when you're optimizing code, you want to get rid of CPU cycles, you want to execute faster. And it can be quite helpful to have a tool like this to measure uh, how much faster is it. I'm getting to the last step of our string here. So now you can see we loaded zero into the accumulator. And you can see now the zero flag is set. So that means when we call branch equal, then it's going to jump to done. It's going to return to our return statement here. But since if we execute this, it's not going to do anything else because there's nothing to return to here. Uh, you can see we are already at the top of, top of the stack. So that's just a quick look at the debugger. Have a play with it. It's quite useful. Okay, so that's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. Or if you have any suggestions for things you would like me to cover, just leave a comment. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.